But today I kind of want to take take a step back and, and look at um, our our feeding strategy for our cows. Um, our, our forage is doing the job, and how do we tell that? And, and if we do need to feed, what kind of feed do we need to feed to, to really meet our cows' requirements? And so when we talk about nutrition in the cow-calf program, I kind of can sum it up in two goals. First, we want to feed our cows economically. You know, we don't want to put any more money into our cows than we have to. We don't have to, you know, we want to, we want to limit our inputs. Um, but we also don't want to, uh, to feed our cows to the point where they have reproductive failure. And that means that they're weaning a live, healthy calf every year and that they have adequate nutrition to be able to rebreed in a timely manner. You know, a cow, beef cows only have 80 days after calving to rebreed to be able to have a calf every 365 days. So that, that's pretty important to make sure that, you know, our nutrition program is focused on that, those goals. Um, and, and when I talk about cost of nutrition, it's pretty important because 60% of our annual cow cost is attributed to feed costs. And 30% of that 60% is attributed to the supplemental feed we're feeding them. So if we can reduce or minimize the waste in that supplemental feed, you know, limit it to uh, be more strategic and use it when we actually need it, and, you know, we can have a significant, um, you know, impact on our input cost for our cows. So your first step is really to, to evaluate your forages. You know, these are the, 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 in the pastures, cows are out grazing grasses. What, what, is, what are we getting from that grass? And, and is, that cow, is that grass meeting the cow's requirements? Um, so you want to take it, I've got some numbers here for an average forage value here in the southeast. This top line is energy values. This bottom line is crude protein values of, of our average forages. And when we compare that to the cow requirements in the orange line, we can see that, that our pasture forages, on average, meet or exceed our cow requirements for protein and energy for majority of the year. And this is for a January calving herd, and you can see that there might, might be some concern. Um, you know, the excess isn't quite there for, for late gestation or, or right after calving and early lactation when the cow's requirements are higher. So we want to take a look, at, especially at those times, um, and if we're feeding our cows, um, do, do we, uh, if we're feeding our cows supplemental feeds, the question that comes to mind, um, do we just need to feed a regular energy, high energy feed, or will it be more efficient to feed a higher protein feed? And I've kind of got a decision tree here, uh, just kind of kind of reminding us of a few factors and a few observations we can make just standing out looking over the pasture and, and making a decision on, on our supplemental strategy. So the first question you want to ask is, is there enough grass in the pasture for the cows to eat? Is there enough gra uh, grass out there to keep them content and meet their nutrient requirements? So if you ask that question, yes, we go out there and we can physically measure, take some representative samples of the pasture and weigh it, and then calculate how much forage we have in the pasture, and does that meet the two, two and a half percent of body weight per day that those cows need to eat forage? If we can say that, then yes, the cows have enough forage. Other situation is no, there's not enough forage out there to meet the, to meet the cow's requirements for meeting, uh, meeting that. And that's when we want to consider either reducing the forage, <coughs> forage needs of the herd by lower, lowering our herd count or giving them more forage ground, or we can consider a supplement program. So let's take our first answer. We went out, we've measured, and yes, we've made the decision that there's enough forage out there that should be meeting the cow's requirements. Then you want to measure, okay, is there enough protein in that forage? Um, to be able to, to meet the cow's protein requirements. And this can be done by a visual observation, and a more, and, and, or we can use take a sample and send it off and, and get a lab, lab analysis done. Now, an observation along with that analysis is, is do you have brown forages? That's an indication, a visual indication, that your protein levels in, in your forages are likely low. And a critical point of that in forages is 7%. Because when that crude protein level of that diet falls below 7%, your rumen microbes, or your bugs in the, in the gut of the cows, aren't doing their job as efficiently. They're not, it may negatively impact your intake of your forages, and it may in, in decrease their efficiency of those microbes to be able to digest that forages and, and for the cow to get the, the nutrients that she needs. If your forages are ground, that's good. If your forages are green, excuse me, that's a good visual observation that your energy and protein requirements should, should be sufficient. So if we, if we go back to our first question, yes, we, we still have, we have adequate forage in our pastures, but we've decided by visual observation or lab analysis that we don't, have, we have a protein deficiency in our forages. The next question you ask is, are, are my cows in adequate body condition scores? Are our cows in moderate 
moderate body condition score, five or six, or are they, are they thin or are they really obese? The question is, yeah, our cows are an adequate body condition score, then, but our protein is limiting, then we might want to consider um, supplementing with a high, high, moderate to high protein feed. And when we're considering this, we're, we're looking at 0.1 to 0.3% of body weight per cow per day. So it's not a significantly large amount of feed that we're looking at. But we're, our goal is we want to feed those, those uh, bugs in the gut uh, to improve rumen efficiency. And that'll pr improve intake and improve the ability to, to digest the forages that they do have. You want to consider those forages on a cost, uh, a cost per, per amount of crude protein. Um, if we've decided we have enough forage, but our protein is limiting, and our cows are not in good body condition score, then we may want to look at a moderate crude protein feed. Um, an example of this is, and what I'm using is distiller's grains. It's a readily available feed, a moderate crude protein, and what we're doing to that is we're feeding, to, feeding the protein to improve rumen efficiency, feeding those bugs in the gut, but we're also providing a little extra energy that the cow needs. And these feeds can be weighed on a crude protein and an, and an energy basis um, when, you're, when you're considering which is more cost effective. So let's go back to our first question. We've decided, well, maybe we don't have enough forage available in, in, our, in our pastures to meet the cow's requirements. And then we go back to the question again, is there enough protein in that forage? So it can be done by a lab analysis or visual observation. If you have green forages, what, for, what little forage is there? Um, that's a good indication that, that protein is probably adequate. Uh, but we, might, we probably have an energy situation. Um, so we're looking at a lower crude protein feed, usually about 20%. Um, and, and we're wanting to supply that energy to, to the cow. So we're going to figure the cost of our feed on an energy basis to be more cost effective. If we, well, we have little forage but, and it's brown, we've likely got an energy and a protein you know, situation where we, where we need to supplement both. So we're looking about a moderate protein feed. These would be some of your, pro, your byproduct feeds. Um, and we're looking at feeding these at, at 0.3 to 0.5% of cow body weight to, to be able to get the energy and the protein that she needs. And again, going back, we're, um, we want to keep that crude protein above 7% for her bugs, uh, bugs in her gut to be able to do their job. And we'll, we'll weigh the, this decision on an energy and a crude protein basis when you're looking at the cost effectiveness of the feed. So when I talk about feeding some of these some of these protein feeds, I'm not talking about feeding a very large amount of feed that we might think about are, are higher energy feeds. Um, a lot of uh, recent studies have shown that we can feed some of these higher protein feeds um, above you know moderate to high. We can feed them as little as three days a week, like on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and get a very similar response to feeding and feeding on a daily basis. And that's because the cow actually takes some of that excess nitrogen from the from the first you know, when she first, uh, first feed intake, and she actually has nitrogen recycling. So that response actually lasts a little bit longer. We can, we can actually reduce um, our number of our labor in feeding um, by feeding fewer days with these higher protein feeds. When you're feeding these higher protein feeds, it's important to remember that forage needs to be available um, for that to work because we're feeding the protein for these rumen microbes to do their job, but they need that energy, that forage, um, to be able to do their job. And the main benefits we're getting from this is from improving intake and digestion efficiency um, of, of our forages that we do have. So um, that's just kind of some good reminders, um, you know, that I have in, in trying to decide your supplemental strategy. And stay tuned over the next couple of years. You know, um, next year we'll probably have, have some good data as, our, as we've weaned our calves and they're in the feedlot um, on, on, what, um, on, on what our cow nutrition during late pregnancy. Um, does on a longer term scope for our calves. And so that's something, you know, kind of keep in mind. Uh, like I said, nu uh, uh, nutrition for a dry cow in late pregnancy isn't a new idea, um, but maybe taking a step back and looking at it in the longer term and, and what's more efficient for our cows um, in, that, in that strategy. And just kind of keep in mind that, you know, take a look at your forage composition and your pastures and, and use that as the base of your nutrition programs and then decide if you need to supplement your cows and, and what you need to supplement them with. And uh, I really look forward to, uh, to seeing this research uh, carried out over the next couple of years and, and seeing what we find and, and hopefully finding an answer for, for a, lot of, a lot of those folks here in Tennessee. So that's all I have. I mean, if y'all have some questions. What about your protein to, to supplements? Are they doing just as good a job as supplementing with the distiller's grain or? Oh, I, I've, 
found that your, your crude protein, um, your high crude protein t tubs um, are really good for convenience. You know, if you, if you don't have the ability to go out and feed your cows every day. Um, but some, some of the numbers that I've looked at is, is that we do a better job of feeding our cows um, if, if we're hand feeding them. You know, if you're looking at, you know, you're feeding a high protein feed and you're feeding just, just a small amount, um, because your cows, your, your consumption, your cows will be more even. Um, and uh, some, some of the self feed, you know, tubs and things like that, some of your cows and herds aren't, aren't consuming the proper amount, that, you know, that's ideal for them to get. Um, so if you're looking at, at your feeding your herd and, and getting more even uh, feed supply and you've got time to go out and, and feed, you know, with these higher protein feeds three days a week, you can get the same similar response and, and maybe a better one than, than something that's some, like some of those. Definitely better than nothing. Correct. Yeah, yeah better than nothing. Uh, and so. specifically for the field program, what we're looking for here or trying to determine is if it's more of an energy mm -hmm. issue than it is just protein. So you yep. may, you know, to really have a, a dramatic effect on that calf performance while it's still in the cow, you may need more energy than what you get. Are we all looking at, uh, like, like leaning in an early leaning and the impact that would have on the next calf in utero? Is that um, early weaning is not a part of not a part of this research. Um, I know if, if you uh, if if you uh, there's been several studies out there looking at early weaning on heifers, uh, you know, giving them a, a more energy to to reaching their mature weight, and recovering from the you know the heavy stress and nutritional stress of lactation. That um, early weaning can can have a positive effect if you have uh, problems with your heifer breeding back. Things like that, but no, no weaning, weaning strategies. Not, not something I'm looking at in connection with this. One of the things on the calf side is when we sit down to plan these trials, we end up with well, you got about 600 cows on this trial, 500 cows, and so um, 450 calves maybe. Mm -hmm. um, is what we'll end up using to, to get collect some of these data off of. We always talk about stratifying and get more data, but it believes the statistical power. So I mean. We talk about a ton of stuff like that we'd like to do, but really we have to keep it pretty simple just to, to have confidence in what the statistics are. Yeah, because this is a longer term study. It, it's hard to repeat, you know, ser several different times. And so, um, we, like I said, wanted to include a lot of things we could have included, um, but uh, that, that's something maybe there's been a lot of, a lot of work done on. We get some questions about you know, have we had heavy calves? We, you know, we're feeding our cows. You increase calf birth weights. It, heavy calves and calving problems has not been a major issue with this. And I'm not talking about feeding such a large amount of energy. Um, you know, that we're growing the calf, and it may be just a couple of pounds, but nothing that's that's had a huge impact on, on the calving ease. So. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Thank you. I see it.